Good, good morning. morning. It's nice, it's nice to, to see everyone, everyone on, on this rainy, rainy day, day in Sarasota, Sarasota Florida, Florida at St. Wilford, Wilford Church. Church. We, we invite you to open a blue hymnal, hymnal or, or look, look at, at the screen. screen. We, are we are singing hymn number 648, 648, 648 verses, verses 1, one two, 2, and, and 4. four. Our service, Our service continues, continues on page 355 in the, in book, the book of, of Common, Common Prayer, Prayer, also, also on, on our screen. screen. Blessed, Blessed be God, Father, Son, and, and Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Almighty, Almighty God, God, to you, you all, all hearts, hearts are open. open. All, all desires known, and, and from, from you, you no secrets, secrets are hid. hid. Plan the, the thoughts, thoughts of our, of our hearts, hearts by, by the, the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that, that we may, may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Lord. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and mortal one, have, have mercy upon us. us. The Lord be with, with you. you. Let us Let pray. pray. God, because without you we are not able to please you, mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated for the reading. A reading from the book of Exodus. The angel of God who was going before the Israelite army moved and went behind them, and the pillar of the cloud moved in front of them and took its place behind them. It came between the army of Egypt and the army of Israel. And so the cloud was there with darkness and lit up the night one did not come near the other all night long. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord drove back the, by a strong east wind 
all night and turned the sea into dry land and the waters were divided. The Israelites went into the sea on the dry ground, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went into the sea after them, all of the Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and chariot drivers. At the morning watch, the Lord in the pillar of fire and cloud looked down upon the Egyptian army and threw the Egyptian army into panic. He clogged the chariot wheels so that they turned with great difficulty. The Egyptians said, let us free from the Israelites, for the Lord is fighting for them against the Egyptians. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea so the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and their chariot drivers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. And at dawn, the sea returned to its normal depth and the Egyptians fled before it. The Lord tossed the Egyptians into the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the chariot drivers, the entire army of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea. Not one of them remained. But the Israelites walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters forming a wall for them on the right and on the left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the Egyptians, and the Egyptians saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Egyptians saw the great work that the Lord did against the Egyptians. So the people feared the Lord and believed in the Lord and his servant Moses. A reading from the, the book of Exodus, the word of the Lord. You to turn to page 756 in the Book of Common Prayer, and we are going to say together Psalm 114. 114, it's on the screen. Hallelujah! When Israel came out of Egypt, the house of Jacob from a people of strange speech, Judah became God's sanctuary, and Israel his dominion. The sea beheld it and fled. Jordan turned and went back. The mountains skipped like rams and the little hills like young sheep. What ailed you, O sea, that you fled? O Jordan, that you turned back. You mountains that you skipped like rams, you little hills like young sheep. Tremble, O earth, at the presence of the Lord at the presence of God of Jacob, who turned the hard rock into a pool of water and flint stone into a flowing spring. And the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Peter came and said to Jesus, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, not seven times, but I tell you, 77 times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. And as he could not pay, the Lord ordered him to be sold together with his wife and children and all his possessions and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him saying, have patience with me and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves who owed him 
a hundred denarii, and seizing him by the throat, he said, Pay what you owe. Then this fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into prison until he would pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger, the Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. Did I do this? In my library, I have a video called The Power of Forgiveness. And the promotional literature that accompanies it says this, over the last 20 years, the study of forgiveness has come into its own. Researchers are examining the psychological and physical effects of forgiveness. And clinicians now have techniques to help people forgive transgressions and get on with their lives. Well, that's probably a good thing. Certainly, forgiving is something that most of us struggle with more than once. But this statement reminds me just a bit of Peter's question to Jesus and a basic misunderstanding that we often share. You see, in Peter's mind, and perhaps in the mind of these clinicians, forgiving is something you do. You either do it or you don't do it, like saying thank you or excuse me. In Peter's world, forgiving is a matter of ethics and manners. Well, Jesus is clear that forgiving is way more than that. When the slave refused to forgive his fellow slave, the master in Jesus' story handed him over to be tortured. And Jesus concluded, So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. And so, in the kingdom of God, forgiving is not an option. It is a requirement. And I can hear you in some corner of your little brain going, but Jenny, it's really hard to do. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, yeah, yep, it is. But you see, forgiving doesn't come to us naturally. The natural human instinct is to survival. And a hurt or a wound threatens survival. And so the first response when someone hurts you is defense. And defense, by definition, does not include forgiving. So if we are going to forgive, we have to be able to act against our own human nature. And as far as I know, the only way to do that is by grace and grace alone. So I want you to hear this, and I want you to memorize it. Two statements. Forgiving is not something we do by act of human will. You got it? Forgiving is not something we do by act of human will. It is only accomplished by God's grace. It is only accomplished by God's grace. You got it? Do you need it again? 
the hard part is not the forgiving. The hard part is the struggle to be willing to forgive, to be willing to accept God's grace when it's handed over to us. And that's why Jesus told this story. The first slave was part of the system, which was a hierarchy that included the concept of justice. And that's what the slave was looking for, justice. And so he went to the king and he made his plea. Look, I'm a loyal person. I'm a hard worker. I know this debt is huge, but give me time and I will pay you back. All he wanted was justice. And instead of granting him justice, the king gave him compassion, sometimes known as grace. The king forgave the debt. The slave did not have to pay. And the scripture doesn't tell us what he thought about this extraordinary gift. But you can see in the story as it goes on that being forgiving, forgiven did not automatically change this guy's self-understanding, nor did it change his perception of how the world should work. Because we read as we go on that he later saw someone who owed him money instead of offering some of the same grace and compassion that he received, he demanded justice again. And this time he got justice, not from the slave, but from the king. The king simply let him receive the consequences of his actions. Now note, I did not say that God punished the slave. God didn't punish him. The slave received the just rewards of his own behavior. Because, you see, forgiveness does not erase consequences. You may remember this story. A couple of years ago in Dallas, Texas, an extraordinary scene was acted out in a courtroom. A young black man sat in the witness stand speaking to a white woman who was on trial. Her name was Amber Geiger. She was an ex-police officer who had just been accused of murdering this man's beloved older brother, Baltham Jean, murdering him in his own apartment. You see, Geiger had entered Botham's apartment by mistake, thinking it was her apartment, Then she mistook him for an intruder and shot him in the chest. At her trial, Botham's heartbroken younger brother, Brant, took the stand. And he told Amber that he forgave her, that he wanted only the best for her, and that he hoped she would give her life to follow Christ. And then, after asking permission from the judge, And to the astonishment of everyone present, this young man, Brant, walked across the courtroom and embraced the woman who killed his brother. And she clung to him, sobbing. It was an incredibly moving and courageous example of forgiveness. Amber Geiger is currently serving time in prison for the murder of Botham Jean. And that is as it should be. Because, you see, forgiveness does not erase consequences. And in this modern story, we hear clearly the presence of both justice and grace. And I believe that both of those things are part of forgiveness, for our God is both a just and a loving God. And forgiveness is central to God's good news. Remember, it was from the cross that Jesus cried out, Father, forgive them. Forgiveness is a gift from God. Forgiveness involves us, but it requires nothing from us except our willingness to be used by God. We sometimes mistakenly believe that forgiving is an activity between two human beings, that there is a perpetrator who must say sorry and a victim who must say I forgive. 
But that's not forgiving. That's a picture of reconciliation, which may or may not be part of forgiving. Forgiving is the act of an individual. It is a decision, just like the decision to love. Forgiveness is also always unconditional. Forgiveness does not say, I will forgive you only if you never do it again, or only if you promise to change your behavior. I mean, remember again Jesus on the cross. Did any of those soldiers look at him and say, oh, gee, I'm sorry? Did Pilate repent? I don't think so. It may be helpful to remember that the word is forgiveness, not aftergiveness. We forgive first, regardless of the other person's behavior or attitude. Another common misunderstanding is embodied in the phrase forgive and forget. The implication is that if we can wipe out the memory of the hurt, then we will also toss, lose any anger or hatred against the one who hurt us. But you know, it doesn't work that way. A wound always leaves a scar. And part of forgiving the hurt is learning how to live with its consequences for your life. And so forgiving becomes a process, not a single event. And the only way to do it is to persist. And that way of persistence is the way of openness. You cannot forgive until you can imagine the possibility of forgiving. In order to forgive, we have to be open to the idea that things could be different from the way they are right this minute. Or, if you don't mind my repeating myself, in order to forgive, we have to be open to receive the gift of grace. Which brings us right back to where we began. Forgiving is not something we do by act of human will. It is only accomplished through God's gift of grace. Got it this time? Okay. Forgiving is the action of the gospel, and it is God acting in us. The gospel says if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. Forgiving is what God has already done for us, and what we remember and celebrate every Sunday by receiving the body and blood of his passion. Forgiving makes all things, even grubby folks like you and me, forgiving makes us all shiny and new again. Forgiving is what we celebrate on Easter morning. Let all God's people say, Alleluia. I invite you to open the hymnal to hymn number 411. We will sing verses 1, 2, and 5. Verses 1, 2, and 5. It's also on the screen. Oh, bless the Lord, my soul.
as we remain standing, I invite you to join with me as we recite the Nicene Creed found on page 358 in the screen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are on page 359 and on the screen. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, including Andrew, Carolyn, Elizabeth, Anne, Robert, Jeanette, George, Joe, Denise, Jack, Robert, Rita, Mary, and Irene. We offer prayers of gratitude for health care workers, nursing home attendants, and all persons working in essential businesses who risk their own health to meet our needs. We give thanks for our many blessings, especially we remember those celebrating birthdays, weddings, anniversaries, and other joyous occasions. Give to the departed eternal rest. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We pray for all of those suffering because of weather and fire. Lord, hear the prayers of your people, and what we have asked faithfully, grant that we may obtain effectually to the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, God we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. 
for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy upon us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. promise we must make every prayer and step of faith every difference we will make is only by his grace every mountain we must climb every ray of hope we shine every crescent left behind is only by his grace grace alone which god supplies strength unknown he will provide christ in us our cornerstone we will go forth in grace alone every soul we long to reach every heart we hope to teach everywhere we share his peace is only by his grace every loving word we say every cry or tear away every sorrow turn to praise is only by his grace grace alone which god supplies strength unknown he will provide Christ in us, our cornerstone, we will go forth in grace alone, we will go forth in grace alone. The Holy Eucharist is offered to the glory of God in thanksgiving for Jesus Christ and his great compassion towards us. Our service continues on the screen or on page 361 in the Book of Common Prayer. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit, you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. 
Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infant love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O oh Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension. We offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ by him and with him and in him in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May the Lord Jesus, who walks with wounded feet, walk with you until the end of the road. May the Lord Jesus, who serves with wounded hands, enable you to serve others. And may the Lord Jesus, who loves with a wounded heart, be your love forever. Love God wherever you go this week, and may you see the Lord Jesus in everyone you meet. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and those you love this day and always. Our closing hymn, verses 1 and 4, verses 1 and 4, him in the hymnal or on the screen, 347, go forth for God. thought you had something to tell me. Be seated for just a moment. No, it's not perfect. So before we do anything else, we have to make a major decision. Is it pouring outside? Yes. All right. How many of you will raise your hand if you're parked out front?
All right, the people that are parked out front, when we release, when we say the dismissal, you all go first and go that way, and then we'll release the rows for the other people to go the other way. All right? Did that make sense? Okay, <laughs> good. <laughs> it's nice to know I'm making sense this morning. <laughs> um, so it's a good day when that happens. Um, I think we don't have any major announcements. There are umbrellas being handed out. If you see yours on the way, please wave. And we <laughs> okay. Um, Mother Joyce has an, an announcement. You know, we can't take people for granted. And while I was away on my wonderful vacation for two weeks, Pinckney stepped up and he was a wild man and he took charge for two weeks of our the Monday Bible study lessons and also Thursday. He's discerning a call and he had, and they're all women, so he had them all to himself. And I, <laughs> okay, I, and I told them to be mean to him, but I don't think, I don't think they were. Anyway, thank you, Pinckney. That takes a lot of work. You've got to plan and do what you've got to do. And plus, he has another life. So thank you so much. And it's good to have you back. You were missed. <laughs> yes. Um, okay, so life is still strange in the um, field of, of elder care in terms of access to people that are in these facilities, although we have on one hand people saying that the facilities are now available for, for visiting. We haven't found any here in town that are willing to let us come yet. Um, that said, we have received word that Jeannie Wood is rehabbing. She had a fall, nothing terribly serious, but she is rehabbing in a local rehab facility. So please keep Jeannie in your prayers. Um, and I'm sorry? I think it's called something like Encompass. I, I can... <laughs> we know where we're going. I can get there, no problem. <laughs> yes, Sue. The, okay, Mauna Loa is the name of the street. Um, also, I've come bearing a message from Edith. Um, she was thrilled with her, her lovely box full of greetings, and she has been on the phone all week. She says her ear is just exhausted, but she's been talking to friends and, and family, and we're just so glad that we could make that a special day for her. Um, I, I saw something in the paper this week about somebody who was a picture of somebody turning 100, and I thought, wait a minute, we got one that's 107. We, <laughs> we can beat that. So um, uh, we got some work going on with some of the trees and things around the campus and um, the food pantry this week this past Friday served 177 families oh, wow. I, I don't know how they're doing it um, with God's help God's help the Holy Spirit clearly wants this to keep happening so thank you Jesus if you can help I know that George is there I know that John is there if you want to ask any of them um, after the service what it what needs doing when people are needed you're doing packing earlier in the week aren't you John Monday Tuesday Tuesday and Wednesday Thursday now, I know they're packing on Thursday but I think they're doing some packing before Thursday too so um, we are going to have a coffee hour following this um, service so at about a uh, quarter of 11 I will send out a thing about 10 30 giving you a link and you can join us we have a lot of fun at the coffee hour we, we rehash the service and talk about all the ways that those of us up front screwed up like <laughs> like today when I ran over top of the sermon hymn that's all right we got it in hey we can do this um
Yeah, if, you, if you'd like to be humiliated, we do this up here. I mean, all the time, <laughs> if you feel a need for it. Um, I think that's everything. All else seems to be going well around here. Um, Joe, we got some, ru- some shell for your ruts back there this week, so we, we fixed one little problem. The little problems sometimes turn out to be huge. Any other questions, concerns? Okay, try to stay dry. So give us a dismissal sentence. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks Thanks be to God. All right, let's have the people that are out front go. And please stay distanced. I'm so afraid. I worry constantly that we're going to infect each other.